All right, my Shade Tree Mechanics. Uh, today I've got a clutch fan on a 96 Mazda, which is really kind of a Ford in disguise. We call them Ford Rangers. I'm having a problem with this rascal right here. This is the new one, and I'm going to show you this first because what I looked on YouTube to see what kind of videos were out there, all you heard about was my engine's overheating, overheating. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a primary thing. That's kind of one of the number one things that happen when the clutch fan goes out because this little coil right here gives up the ghost and it doesn't want to tighten up and make this thing spin so therefore the engine overheats. That's not my problem and there's not but maybe one or two little hinting videos out there that says when this stays tight it wants to spin all the time. So mine sounds like a jet engine going down the road. So, does it hurt the engine? No. Does it hurt my fuel mileage? Yes. So we're going to change it. Summertime, that was all fine and dandy, but here we are in winter, and I want to go ahead and do it because it keeps the engine a little too cool. I'm not getting a lot of heat in the cab from it, but I'm also going to check with a barometer. I'm going to go ahead and check my coolant in here and make sure we're all good to go in there. But uh, I'm going to have to do this one in stages. There's a whole lot of stuff in the way. And I'm going to show you here. we got all this to kind of get out of my way. We have to take off the fan shroud. At the same time, we're removing all of this on the inside. I'll try and show you a few things of that. But what I want to show you right now, if this will work, is that you can see when I start to spin it, it wants to start to go. The one I have in there right now, when you grab it, it's turn and turn. And it won't let go. It should turn really easy. When you start your engine up, you're going to hear this woo from it. It's a real loud wind noise. That's normal. And then a few seconds later, you should hear it come down. And then you shouldn't hear it at all. And when you look down in here, where your fan is, you should see it barely turn. You can see that's hard to turn, so I know it's stuck. <laughs> but it should come down. You shouldn't hear this thing until your thermostat tells the sensor that it's going up to a roughly, let's say, 190 degrees is what this one is. Then the fan comes on. You'll hear that big whoosh of air come on. And then it'll run for two or three minutes some of them run longer it just depends on the model until it brings the coolant down to the optimal temperature again and then the fan should slowly disengage and you shouldn't hear it on a good day like winter man that thing shouldn't come on but every once in a while because you're gonna have enough cold air being forced through the radiator to keep that coolant down mine on the other hand is running like a screaming demon I'll show you this in stages so I'm going to start removing a few things. I'm going to start with my air intake pipe and then uh, go from there. Alright, we've loosened off this screw and this one right here. And this is going to be a little difficult sometimes to get off, but just keep giving her a little wiggle. If you have any sensors connected here and hoses, you can unhook those before you get this too far. You don't want to snap anything off. Alright, there we go. So we're here. So it looks like to me it's going to be pretty tight down in there. And let me get this here and we'll show you what it looks like from my angle. We are going down in here. And it's a little dark down there, so let's hope my hand will go down there. There's a nut right back down there. There's going to be a couple of them on the top on this one we're going to have to take loose. But I'm going to tell you right now before you get too far off down in there. Y'all like my plants? It's cold here. <laughs> have to bring them in. This is not righty tighty lefty loosey. This is a counter thread, so it goes the opposite way. So righty would be loosey. So remember this, this is like doing pipe thread. This doesn't go on like a regular screw. You turn it the opposite way to get it to come off because it goes with the engine torque to keep it tight when it's going down the road. So let's keep that in mind when we're replacing fan clutch. I have a little problem, and I'm going to kind of give you all a little tip on this one. You're going to need at least two of the screws that hold this fan onto the water pump. But because there's such a narrow space down in there, my wrench won't fit on the nut. So I'm going to take two of the screws off so that my wrench will go on there, and then I can use the other two screws as a leverage point. I'm going to put a pry bar back in between the two of them so when I pull on the wrench, it doesn't all want to turn because I've had to take the belt off to get down in there little tip on that while we're here. 
your idler tensioner pulley. Uh, some of them pull up to you, some of them push away to you, or I'm sorry, away from you. Um, but you need to really make sure that you have one of these cool diagrams that tells you how your belt goes back on. This is real important. If you don't, videotape it, take a picture of it, do something, because you don't want any of these things spinning backwards. Some of them are pretty bulletproof. You can't really screw it up. Groove side to groove belt, flat side to flat side of the belt. But check your model, check your make, make sure that you put that belt back on there the right way. All right, I've got it ready to come out. And just an FYI, I said earlier, check your model. And I told you that that fan clutch was a counterclockwise. This model has fooled me. It was righty tighty lefty loosey one. I have had them both ways, so please check your manuals. Make sure you know which way you're banging that thing. And I guess I probably should have told you when you put the wrench down in there. Let me get my setup that I'm doing here. I happen to have the big wrench. You can get these things at any one of them little Chinese shops or inexpensive as things like two bucks. Well, it was on sale. Big hammer, smack the end of this thing, and I've got the belt back on it so it gives tension. A couple of good hits, kind of like doing an impact wrench, and it's going to knock it off there. And you'll already come right off real easy once it breaks loose. So here we go. Let's take this thing out. I've got the fan shroud loose. We're going to bring it all out at one time, hopefully. There we go. There she comes right on out. All right. Let me get this camera situated so I can show you what I'm talking about here. Oops, sorry about that guys. Alright, I showed you earlier that the fan was real easy to turn. This one is not turning. It's a bad clutch. It runs all the time again. Not horribly bad, just kills your fuel mileage. Eventually it will lock up and it won't be any good. On the back of this particular one we have four screws. We're going to take those off. The kit comes with four new screws. Please use the new screws. Old ones are okay if you lose one, but these are old screws. Let's put new ones on, just to be safe. All right, so I'm gonna begin putting it back together and putting it on, and I'll get back with you. All right, I'm putting the fan back on the clutch. Now I wanna point this out, because if you're new to all of this, these screws are going into a piece of aluminum. How tight should they be? Everything has a torque spec. You wanna look it up? Look it up. It's not going to be much. It'll probably be in Newton meters. But a good deal is, is once you got it to a certain point, just kind of give it a good snug and don't pull too hard. You know, so I'm just using two fingers and my thumb against the blade and I'm just kind of giving it a good pull. That's all it needs. And there you'll hear maybe sometimes a little creak. You don't want to go much further because we stripped that out. And then we're going to have to learn how to use a, uh, a threader. And you really don't want to have to go to that to do this. So. Here we go. I'm going to get the fan shroud. Try and slip all this back down in there just the way we took it out. It's got a couple of little ears I'm going to have to hit when I'm down there. So what I want to do, I want to see if I can pre-thread this just a tiny bit and then I'll mess with the fan shroud. Okay, there we go. A little tight on these little cards. Make it Don't want to cross this, cross thread this thing out. So just be patient with it. Get her to go back on. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Just gonna give me a little bit of a fit. See if I can get my hand down here and get a twist. Okay, there we go. Yep, guys, it's taking a little longer than I thought. I thought I could stab her and go. Yeah, it's going to be contrary. Right, let's try a little something different here. If it ain't working, try something else. Please be patient. You see, I'm being patient with it. 
you cross thread that thing and try to force it on there, you're going to have a big, big mess. You'll have to replace the water pump. Time. There'll be some that says if you replace the fan, you should go ahead and replace the water pump. I don't have a water pump issue. There she goes. So I'm not going to mess with it. I don't think it's that much trouble. It's not leaking. It doesn't have any signs of it leaking in the weep hole. She's spinning up under it good. There she goes. All right, so let's get this thing stabbed back in place. Down in there, you can see them. We'll just put that back on, and she'll line right back up. Alright, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to put one screw on for right now to hold everything in place until I get this fan tightened up. That ought to hold it in place until I get ready. Spin her all the way up on there. That nut will stop turning, it tells you. She's kind of seated up. So now we're going to do the big part. All right. I'm going to try and not knock over the camera during this process. So if it does, I my apologies. But this is how we're going to make it stay. Okay. Just be real careful in this. You're going to get it on there the best you can because it's a little tight down in there. And you're going to give it a smack. Again, we're doing like an impact thing. How do I know when I got it on there tight enough? This is all by feel. I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm going to kind of give it a couple of good smacks, and I'm going to kind of back it off a little bit, see if it's getting tighter. And I'm going to turn in this nut so, I can, so it's turning the engine, so I know I'm getting tight. Give it a little more good wax, and try not to break anything. That'd be running backwards, so. She's getting nice and tight. So let's give her a couple more just to be on the safe side. So what will happen is that engine is spinning and stuff. Hopefully it'll help it tighten up. But if you need to do a wedge, you take a big screwdriver and you can stick it in between one of the screws down here. Turn this until it tightens up. And then you can and you should give her what she needs. All right. I gotta put a couple of screws back in and a fan deal down there. And then I'll button everything back up and we'll fire it up and see how she's running. Alright. I've got all my stuff put back on, got my air intake back on, got my belt on, and touch one little basic here. Make sure that when you put these belts back on, that these grooves in this belt line up with the grooves on the pulleys. If you don't, you're gonna eat a $50 belt. Let's not do that. Let's make sure they line up nice. Everything's good and tight. Smooth sides are all down and good. And this is the little thing you can check your uh, antifreeze with if you don't think it's quite right. You should change this stuff between one and two years. I do it about every two because I don't drive this thing that hard. What you do is you stick it down inside here and these little balls are going to float. And you're going to pull up some of that fluid. Let's, yeah, there you go. You want to see them float. And on here... I hope y'all can see this. Let me see. Yeah, let's get it over here. See if I can sling it all over the place. You see the little balls. And this one is floating up. It says that it should be good down to about minus 40. That's really good. You do want to do a 50-50 mix on this stuff. If you get too much water, it wants to overheat. If you get too much coolant, your heater is not going to work in the winter time. So it's kind of a delicate balance. You can do a 50-50. If you're more summer driving, I'd probably run it a little heavier. Put more antifreeze than water. It kind of helps the engine stay lubed a little bit and kind of keeps everything nice and smooth. But the rule is 50-50. So mine looks good. I'm not too worried about it. Color looks good. There's nothing weird floating in it. And while we're here, let's talk a little bit about map sensor. Uh, there's lots of YouTube videos out there on the map sensors. I'll make sure everything's okay with that. You know, I think uh, the next time I swing by the auto parts place, I want to get me a new cap. I'm going to show you why. And here this groove has become really deep, and down inside the main seat has become really deep. This spring in here is what I'm really worried about, because this is what opens and closes 
so that you get your overflow out if the radiator is overheating a little bit or it fluctuates so that's why we have a reservoir over there so it doesn't blow it out all over the ground but it's a little you know yeah it's it's a little stiff so I'm gonna say this caps probably been on here for a long time so I'm gonna buy me another one they probably run about five to ten dollars down at the auto part place so I'll get me one of those but, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the map sensors. There's lots and lots of videos out there on the map sensors. Everybody wants to do one on those. I'm going to do one too. <laughs> Air filter. This is where all the stuff gets trapped, keeps it from coming over into your engine and ruining it. But there's like these micro particles and carbon in the air. Comes across, hits the map sensor. It's got like a, a little element down in there. And I'm not going to take this one out because again, you can look on YouTube. There's umpteen different kinds of these things but the principle is let's clean this thing you need to do it about once a year if you're in a really dusty environment like some people I know in West Texas I mean they clean theirs a couple of times a year it helps with the fuel mileage this is talking to everything else because this is what's telling it is a mass air sensor that's why they call it the map and it's telling it what air is traveling all the way around and going into the horn then you've got all your throttle position and your TPS and everything over there is all kind of related but you need to clean this and it's a very particular cleaner it's this one right here and don't use anything else you're gonna hear them say that on the YouTube as well reason being if you clean that element off and there's a film on it and, and if you clean that off then it's not gonna work right at all and you're back to might as well left it dirty but need to take it out and just give it a little cleaning mine has two little screws on it and I have these awful little let's see if we can get a good shot on it they call them uh, male torque bit so you'll need a female torque bit to undo that I hate these things but that's the way they try to keep you from working on things make sure you unplug it before you take this off and when you're taking it out be real gentle you break that element you're gonna have to go buy one of these and the last time I bought one it was sixty dollars so you know be careful just take the map stuff clean it real good let it dry clean it again let it dry it takes about 10 15 minutes you'll hear people tell you let it set for 30 you know good warm day do it in the summertime and just clean that real good that will help keep your fuel mileage up as well because it's telling it how much air is coming in and how much air it needs and how much fuel it needs and where everything's supposed to be so just clean that thing but don't use anything but this this is all you ever use to clean the map sensor and I don't think they stress that enough so guys, I'm going to fire it up here in a minute, and uh, we'll see how she sounds. All right, I probably should have started it before I changed the, the fan clutch, but you'll hear the same kind of sounds going on, but you just won't hear that big whoosh of air constantly. So I'm going to start it. Hopefully the camera won't fall over. I kind of get you positioned here so you can see that fan. And we'll, how does that look to you guys? All right, All right I'm going to start it. Hopefully you don't fall over. stage down again and that's that's what it's supposed to sound like you should just barely hear that fan blowing I got a lot of good air blowing across you can feel it let's see if it'll blow the rag you can kind of see how she's blowing on the rag a little bit be careful don't get anything sucked off in there so that's all you want until that engine comes up to a certain temperature and you want that big blow of air to cool all the parts and keep her running down the road well I hope this video was helpful for you I'm going to have to get on with it. Have a good lunch.